While there is an incredible number of things about Star Citizen that leave me impressed, it is the flight model that takes the cake. For me personally, a proper flight model is crucial to a fun experience. Whether you're hopping around delivering cargo, shooting up rocks and sucking up valuables, taking care of pirates or better yet, my personal favorite, racing around the verse. It has to happen while operating a ship of choice feels epic. With this video, I want to give you a closer look at my observations. What I like about the flight model so much, the differences between versions 313 and 314, and of course, some things I'd like to see. Let's start in space. Zero G, an excellent baseline to feel how different ships behave. Firstly, Star Citizen uses proper Newtonian physics. You activate a thruster in any of the six available directions and your ship will move there and continue to move there unless you let the coupling system stop you automatically or if you fly with the coupling system disabled, you manually provide thrust in the opposite direction. While engaging thrusters, they fire off appropriate sound effects based on which thruster is firing and how much power is demanded by the pilot. None of that silly sound based on speed, as it is in Elite Dangerous, but actual sound effects that react appropriately to your inputs. Movement speed is different per ship and varies between axes as well. Typically forward is faster than backwards, up is faster than down, and lateral movement is the weakest axis on most ships. The cool thing is that while thruster strength and ship mass varies, the new ship UI provides the pilot with a g-force indicator that returns a direct result of the complicated equation. The easiest and most straightforward way of judging a ship's agility is simply by reading out the maximum g-force in a direction. There are already incredible player tools available as well that document maximum acceleration and g-force for each of the six directions of movement for a given ship to help pilots find the ship of their liking. I'll put a link in the description. Every ship provides a different number of main thrusters, retro thrusters and directional thrusters as well. Each of these can be damaged, destroyed or manually disabled if you like, affecting the flight handling appropriately. And while moving the ship around, the pilot may add rotational forces of course. Pitch, roll and yaw are typically much faster in comparison to Elite Dangerous, much less limiting and more realistic. While small ships provide faster acceleration and rotation, larger ships feel appropriately heavy and sluggish, requiring the use of turrets instead of agility to fend off smaller ships. The coming of version 314 introduced the biggest changes in this aspect, and while most ships feel really good already, there is definitely room for improvement. While small ships feel good typically, some medium ships like the Super Hornet and the Hawk suffer from sluggish rotationals and specifically lateral thrust power that make these ships feel a tad sluggish. For players using keyboard and mouse, Star Citizen offers the coupled mode as default, behaving similarly to Elite Dangerous's flight assist. In essence, flying coupled will see your ship stabilize to a halt when no input is provided. Furthermore, a speed limiter can be set to prevent accidental overspeeding when the pilot might lose sight of their speed relative to the system's local space. What's important to note is that coupled mode makes it more difficult to provide fine adjustments when using analog inputs. This is because providing, as an example, a 10% throttle input will see the ship using full thrust power to move the ship's speed to 10% of its top speed at the fastest rate possible. This is typically why pilots find themselves jolting across paths when trying to position themselves carefully. Flying decoupled does wonders here, for many reasons I'd love to go into. In essence, flying decoupled turns off the system that automatically stabilizes your ship to a halt. A pilot providing 10% thrust now sees the ship accelerating under 10% of the thruster's maximum capacity until he lets go of the control. 
To stop the ship, the pilot will have to provide opposite thrust at the desired power level to come to a halt. While flying smoothly and landing, this makes it a lot easier to control the ship. Pilots that typically fly coupled may have already had a taste of decoupled while their gear was down, as the ship currently automatically enters a sort of decoupled mode when the gear is lowered. By far the biggest gain when flying decoupled though is during combat where your first priority should be to move your ship to a speed relative to your target as opposed to the system's local space. If your target is flying away from you at a speed of 200 meters per second, you want to match that pace as much as you can, drifting along with the target and finding their blind spots. Doing this in coupled mode is challenging and counterintuitive as the ship will always try to halt when no input is provided, and with the added challenge of flying a specific speed due to how the throttle handles in coupled mode, matching speed is challenging too. Disabling coupled mode again allows for very precise movement speeds. Provide thrust until you match your target's velocity and vector and now adjust yourself into tactical positions. As a word of warning, situational awareness is key. Flying decoupled in places like asteroid belts or around stations might see you and your opponent drifting through them while you dogfight. Don't let your surroundings get the better of you. And while this can also be said for flying coupled, I know if I don't mention this, coupled pilots will use it to fuel their argument. Where decoupled mode differs from flying flight assist off in Elite Dangerous is the rotational behavior. In Elite Dangerous, turning off flight assist also turns off the rotational stabilization, where in Star Citizen this currently does not happen. While I personally haven't decided yet which behavior I prefer, options are always the answer. One thing pilots often forget is that while flying in Atmo, which we'll talk about more in a little bit, is that the ship systems are doing a lot to avoid unintended rotations by stabilizing the pitch, roll and yaw attitude for you. Much like an F-16 in real life does due to its natural tendency to spin out of control without the proper systems active. Having the option to turn these systems off though and feel again the immersive flight model Star Citizen has to offer would be awesome. I imagine there's quite a few ships that spin completely out of control or will snap up, down, left or right based on what the Atmo is doing around you. The boost system in Star Citizen is rarely nicely done too. Where thrusters typically provide a maximum thrust of 100%, holding down the boost button will provide the pilot with additional thrust power in any required direction for the duration of the button hold. There is no set number of seconds a boost lasts, nor does it always force main thrust power like in Elite Dangerous. You control the boost duration and direction. There is a boost capacitor and it has a set size with a faster regen the more pips are set to engines. Presumably, there will be some level of engineering possible here with the swapping of parts in the future, but for now these are all set values to start off with. Let's move down to atmospheric flight and open up that can of worms. Oh my god. Star Citizen is basically providing the flight simulator experience, but with spaceflight. While this is a system still in active development, it provides so much immersion already. Ships handle very differently in Atmo, based on the atmosphere's density and the planet's gravity. Every ship handles differently based on their shape, their thruster strength and position, which means that some ships perform really well in Zero-G but terribly in Atmo and vice versa. Take this M50 for example. It's one of the fastest ships in Zero-G. Take it down to a planet though and it suffers immensely. Its wings create an incredible reduction in roll rate as a result of the aerodynamic pressures. The shape of the ship in general causes it to aggressively pitch up or down when too much of either the top or bottom of the ship is exposed to the airflow. Now I think this has a lot to do with the lack of thrust power available for rotations and this is all set to change when aerofoils are introduced as a lot of these ships depend on moving parts on the wings like ailerons and elevators to stabilize themselves in atmospheric flight. Most of the ships just like the M50 here already have movable parts modeled onto them. Check out this Anvil Hawk or as I like to call it Metal Gear X, one of my favorite ships. It already features the ailerons and what appear to be speed brakes on the wings. 
I cannot wait for these to be activated and feel how they add yet another level of influence on the flight model. This is what Star Citizen is all about for me, personally. Can you see how this will affect things like combat and racing based on whether a ship is flying in zero G or a dense atmosphere? Things are going to be so deep and complex based on the ships you're flying, the loadout you carry and the opponent you're fighting. Okay, let's talk some feedback now. I definitely have a few things I hope will get addressed in the future. Let's start with the VTOL mode, where in version 3.13 a lot of ships demanded almost full vertical power to hover in Atmo, currently this is not needed at all. Even ships with a VTOL mode that have engines that may turn down to face the planet don't actually need the VTOL mode at all to stay in a hover, which feels a little immersion breaking. Why would you use the VTOL if there is no need for it? Either the ships are too light or the VTOL thruster is too strong. Something needs to give. I see the struggle for CIG though as they are trying to provide enough agility in 0G, which typically sees thrusters provide more than 1G of force in a given direction, which by definition already removes the demand for a VTOL system. My suggestion would be for ships with a VTOL system to provide less than 1G of thrust, post gravity of course, in a vertical up position to create demand for the VTOL system. You're gonna have to just weaken the base values on these thrusters so that in VTOL mode they're strong enough. Next up is the folding wing system. Lots of ships have folding wings. And right now the behavior of these folding wings is limited. We don't like limits. This is Star Citizen, we need options. On some ships, the wings fold by using the gear button, where on others they fold while using the VTOL button, despite not having any influence on VTOL capabilities or having any VTOL capabilities at all. I think this is a sort of placeholder solution, and I suggest adding an additional button. We have VTOL and gear, now let's add wings. More control is always better. Let players decide when to lower the gear, toggle the VTOL or fold the wings separately and individually with a button. Next, I want to mention the simulated coupled mode that activates when lowering the gear system. I mentioned this a little earlier in the video. I understand that this system is needed and it functions the way it does in coupled mode, but it works counterproductive when flying decoupled due to its nature of its functionality, which is that it automatically provides counter thrust against gravity the way coupled mode does. Basically, when flying around a planet, when you lower your gear, it'll automatically fight the gravity and hold you steady as if you are in zero G. This is also how coupled mode works. My example is this. When flying decoupled on a planet and coming in for landing, I'm typically holding a percentage of vertical thrust manually to keep myself afloat. Now when lowering the gear, that percentage of thrust is suddenly on top of the autopilot simulated decoupled mode that keeps the ship from falling causing an aggressive jolt up, breaking the smooth landing you're about to nail. It looks ugly, it feels ugly, and since I'm flying decoupled already, I basically want you to not influence what I'm doing, just let me do it, touch down smoothly. Again, options are good, I suggest an option to disable this system either entirely or just for decoupled mode. Finally, the boost system. In previous builds, one could hold down the boost button and no heat was generated if you were simply sitting still, and only a little bit of heat was generated if you pushed your stick forward a small amount. Currently, the draining rate of the system is always the same amount, whether you're sitting stationary or you're moving at full power, and this is kind of immersion breaking. CIG has mentioned that this is working as intended, basically when you hold the trigger you're putting the system under load, but I suggest an adjustment to the system to make it more immersive. First of all, you want to make sure that the drain is lower when you are giving less thrust input, it needs to be based on what you're doing. I also recommend the removal of the 1 or 2 second delay when I press the button. It currently feels like a really artificial delay, simply nothing happens until that 1 or 2 seconds later and the boost activates aggressively. Instead, I recommend a ramp up from the moment I press the boost button to the moment it is fully activated. A gentle ramp up there with the accompanying sound effects will go a long way. In summary then, the Star Citizen flight model is amazing, complex and leaves me wanting to fly around more and more even if I'm not doing anything useful. 
So when people ask me, despite all the common Star Citizen issues like a lack of gameplay, the server crashes and the low FPS, why play Star Citizen? I answer, because I get to do this.